Welcome back to Tandem C Television Studios for another quick update. Now, I also want to apologize for there not being an update last week, but the 4th of July weekend just got in the way. It fell right at the time that I needed to film this, uh, and I was busy with the family, so I want to say sorry about that. But we do have an update this week, and we're continuing to work on the D90 scale motor. Uh, we've got a good bit done, so we're going to take a look at that. And then at the end, we'll take a look at what's going on with the studio build-outs uh, and a little bit of the fundraising that's going on, so don't go anywhere. If you remember back to the update a couple weeks ago, we were working on a scale motor build for Fern Solo's D90. And what we had done is modeled out an engine cover, basically a cylinder with an engine block in it that's going to cover the motor in his D90. And we had modeled it with the engine block centered on that or within that cylinder cover. And what we wanted to do was move that actually off, off center of the cylinder or what would be more centered into the D90 itself. Um, and that's just what I did. So I took that back over to Tinkercad and literally just moved the engine block as far over as we could all the way to the edge of that cylinder so now when it uh, when we print this and put it into the d90 it should be more centered in the in the truck itself also when i remodeled the engine cover in tinkercad i reduced the id or the inside diameter just by one millimeter before it was fitting just a little bit loose uh, so i wanted to snug that up and now when we test fitted it is snug i can squeeze it on there if i really needed to but that which is perfect because now when i go back and sand out the inside of the cylinder it should fit on perfectly i think so i'm going to leave that id exactly where it's at now also if you didn't notice i added some uh, air vents at the end to give just give it a little bit of ability for the motor to breathe through this engine cover i don't want the engine overheating on fern uh, while he's out there driving it so i just added some some vents at the end uh, to allow air circulation through the engine cover i went ahead and reprinted all the parts for the motor or what i think we'll call prototype 2 because i want to go ahead and assemble this completely assemble it and refit it in the in the d90 so we can see if that offset how that offset looks but after I printed the pieces out I realized we need to add a little detail to the valve cover it needs a Land Rover logo if you ask me so I took it back to Tinkercad um, and did just that just added a real simple Land Rover um, logo I kept it very simple because it's gonna be very small and hard to print and in fact when I printed mine on uh, printed it out on my printer we lose a lot of the detail but that's okay because remember we're gonna be sending this over to Wes over at West made builds and have him print it on his resin printer so he should get a lot of that detail back and before we assembled what we're calling prototype two, I want to go ahead and give the whole thing, all the parts a good cleanup because I think we're going to take prototype two kind of to that next step. So I want to add paint to it. Uh, so not only are we going to check the centering of the motor, but I also want to see what it's going to look like with some paint when it's sitting in the engine bay. I want to kind of see how that's going to look uh, and make any adjustments that we need to make uh, from, a, from a color standpoint also. So I go ahead and assemble it and I give the whole thing a coat of aluminum. Just took the airbrush, gave the whole thing a, a coat of silver or aluminum paint. Um, and then what I wanted to do, this is one of the main things I want to look at and see how this is going to look, is I gave the cylinder cover, just the cylinder portion of the engine cover, uh, a coat of flat black paint. And my hope is that that's going to make it kind of disappear when it's sitting in the engine bay. It'll kind of disappear and just the motor itself will really stand out. So the engine block and the engine assembly will stand out and you'll lose that cylinder a little bit, which I think I think that's going to work. Now, I also want to add some some wash to it, some black wash to this. I want to make it look like a real engine uh, that's sitting in the engine bay. So it's not going to be this pristine, shiny thing. So I just kind of give it a coat of some black wash give us a look at how that's going to look. And then I also wanted to add color. I wanted to color out the Land Rover logo with some green and white paint. And you can see how much detail, using my printer, how much detail we lose in that Land Rover logo. You can't even read Land, Land Rover. But remember, we're going to let Wes print this. And we should get a lot of that detail back from a resin printer. Uh, and I think that's going to look a lot better and look really clean on there. And speaking of sending this off to West to be printed, I think we're good to go. I think we're ready to go in and send these files over to Wes and have a final print done on this motor. Or are we? This motor is for Fern Solo, a longtime patron of the channel. I think we're going to take this one step further. I want to build out the front of the motor. So I want to put all the accessories on the front of the motor, give it even more detail. Add an, I want to add an air filter. I want to add hosing. I want to give this the works for Fern. So what, that's exactly what I did. I went back to the printer and I printed out a load of, a load of accessories, some details for the motor, gave them a coat of primer, uh, everything from a, a front pulley, like a crankshaft pulley, uh, an alternate or a power steering pump and an alternator um and you know what let me glue that what i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna glue all this stuff up on prototype one we'll take a look 
see how it looks. With all the accessories glued up, you can see it really takes the motor to kind of to that next step, really gives it some detail. Um, there's going to be some fine tuning that needs to be done. I need a, I still need a pulley for the water pump um, and a few other details. I think I'm going to uh, enlarge the, the air filter size. So there's a little bit of adjustment I need to make, but that's why we do this in prototype so that we can get everything just right. And I'm I want to also add some hosing. I'm going to add, I think I'm going to add some plug wires and some other little details. And then this thing is going to be sent off the West. It will be ready to send, send the West, uh, get a nice, smooth, finished product. Um, they, I'll still have to do some final smoothing on and all that and, and give the final paint and assembly, but I think we're going to be there. We'll take a look at that next week. I also wanted to mention that this basically is almost like a kit. So you got all the pieces and I just wanted to mention, uh, patrons out there, all my $5 and up patrons, um, who, because I've been so busy, um, and whatnot, I've somewhat ignored. I really apologize. I thank you guys for, uh, your support. I really do thank you for your support and I want to really pay back. So you, you $5 and up patrons, you're going to be getting this motor minus the Land Rover logo. Cause I don't know what vehicle you'd be putting it in, in kit form. So basically I'm going to print all the parts for you. I'm going to send them your way just as a big thank you because I've, I feel like I've ignored you guys a little for a little too long. So you need a big thank you. And I want to say thank you. And so I think I'm going to put these together basically in kit form, send them out your way. Of course, if you guys want to join the Patreon page, um, I can send one your way also. Um, I just, I just want to say a big thank you for the support because we are doing a ton of fundraising right now, or at least I am, as you know, my own fundraising, I'm putting money together on the side so that we can finish out the studio, which is what we're going to look at right when we come back from this quick break. We'll take a look at how that's going, not only the studio build out, but some of the fundraising. Um, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back and thanks for sticking around. And speaking of sticking around, I hope my channel members also have stuck around after the break. Um, because not only do I want to do these motor kits for my patrons as a thank you, I also wanted to do them for you guys, members of my channel. Um, so it's it's a little more difficult because I don't have your addresses and whatnot like I do my patron members. So if you're a channel member, a channel subscriber, in other words, you hit that join button down below um, and you want one of these motor kits, uh, hit me up at the email in the in the description down below. Just send me an email, let me know, and I'll send one your way also. So I wanted to mention that. I hope you guys stuck around to see this. Now, let's go ahead and head out to what we're calling Studio A uh, and take a quick look, see what kind of updates we got. So out here in Studio A, we've got a bit of an update. It's a small update, but it's an exciting update. And that's, we've started installing some of the drywall. So I had three extra sheets of drywall from some repair I was doing inside the house. So I thought, let's go ahead and start putting this up in in the uh, in Studio A here uh, and get the drywall started because that's kind of the last step. Now, I can't, I can't put in too much drywall because uh, the electrical isn't finalized yet. So I don't want to, I don't want to completely enclose the walls until I know everything is good via check by a, a real electrician. Um, so I want that to happen before I completely close in with drywall. But I wanted to go ahead and start just to see how it's going to start looking. I'm, I'm excited about getting this uh, closed in, give it that final look with drywall up and, and seeing how that's going to look. And actually, I feel like I did an okay job at actually hitting the uh, the outlet holes uh, and doing all that kind of stuff as a very, very much a novice at drywall. Um, I think it's, it's going okay. Now, another thing you can see is I moved the refrigerator over. So I wanted to plug, there's one outlet in this entire uh, in this entire garage or studio A here that's hot right now. And so I wanted to move the refrigerator over, go and plug it in um, so I can use it out here while I'm working because it is hot right now uh, here in Southeast Texas. Um, so I wanted to have a refrigerator out here I could put some waters in. Um, and this is where I needed to get some help from you because every time I plug this refrigerator into this GFCI outlet, it trips the GFCI. Um, now I use my uh, my air compressor and I've plugged all kinds of other things into it. Doesn't affect it at all. Now I don't know if it's because this is uh, an old refrigerator that and the voltage kind of fluctuates a lot when the when the compressor kicks in and off off and on. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about you know, uh, electrical, uh, issues like this. So I was hoping maybe one of you guys would know, is there something I can do? Cause I, I really would like to have this fridge out here to put water in and whatnot. Um, is there anything I can do? Could I, would a surge protector work? If I just put a, a surge protector, would it keep from tripping the GFCI or I don't know, is there another, another solution? Let me know if you know, if you're an electrician, you happen to be watching and you know, a, a good answer for this, let me know. Cause I really like, would like to get this refrigerator running. Now, on a whole, Studio, Studio A is a disaster. As you can see, uh, it's back being a mess, and that's because one of the parts of some of the uh, fundraising we're doing is a garage sale. Um, so 
things have been moved around and scattered around trying to pull out stuff for a garage sale. Um, so it's back to a disaster. So I got to get it back organized, especially before we start really putting in all the drywall. Um, otherwise, we're going to be moving stuff all the time. It's going to make the drywall very difficult to get put in. Um, so I got to get that cleaned up. And I wanted to give one last update. As you remember, we've had animal situations going on uh, here at the new studio, starting with possums. I pulled out a whole family of five possums. Um, then we had mice, got rid of the mice. Uh, then we had flies by the thousand that were in a wall. We got rid of the flies. Then we had honeybees in the wall. We got rid of the honeybees. Well, I just wanted to give you an update. We've come full circle back to possum. So we got another possum out of the house or out of the, out of the attic. Actually, it's not in the house, but from out of the attic. Uh, so we have come literally come full circle. We've got a new studio pet, I guess. Um, I got to go, uh, discard of the possum. Don't worry. I'm not going to kill it. I, I take it way, way away. You have to take them miles and miles and miles away, um, and, uh, let them loose, which luckily here in Southeast, uh, uh Texas, we, we can go, you can go pretty far and there's just big open fields. Um, so anyways, I'll have to go do that with this possum. But we've literally come full, full circle back to possums. I don't know why we're in an animal sanctuary here, but we, apparently we are. What I need to do, and I'm really dreading to do, because it is sinfully hot up in the attic of here in Studio B, um, but I need to go up there and find out how these guys are getting in. I think, I think this might have been a baby from the previous five that I pulled out that I just didn't get and now it grew up a little bit so it might have just because it can go it can travel from the attic of studio b all the way into studio a through a breezeway and I think that's maybe where it's been living I don't know but I need to get up there and see if there's any holes I can close up but I'll do that um, we'll have hopefully have a bigger update for studio b next week next Saturday we're definitely going to have an update on the motor build for the d90 uh, hope that should be actually finalized we might actually not have that big of an update. Uh, I'll finalize prototype two, um, which we can take a look at, but hopefully all the files will be sent off to Wes. Um, and then we'll also have an update on the Gremlin build, which I've been promising you guys. So we'll have that next Saturday also. Um, but I thank you for joining me. I thank you for being patient with the channel while we kind of go through this process of getting to where we need to be with the studios. Uh, I think thank you for everybody's support. And I literally just heard something bang in the attic. If there's another possum up there, I don't know if you guys could hear that. Hopefully it's maybe just the tree hit. I don't know. I got to get up in the attic. I'll see you guys next. Leave a comment. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. I got to get up in the attic. Bye-bye.